Hello and welcome to I Am Viz 2024, Behind the Build. My name's Archana Ganeshalingam and I'm co-host of I Am Viz. For those of you new here, I Am Viz is the world's largest data visualization competition. Each year, hundreds of members of the Tableau community enter a qualifier contest for the chance to be chosen as a finalist to build a Viz in 20 minutes or less in front of thousands at Tableau Conference. This year's championship theme was all about movies, so let's get rolling. During Behind the Build, our finalists will sit down with their sous visa to watch a playback of their build to talk through strategies, techniques, and behind the scenes prep that got them ready for the final showdown. Today, I'm joined by finalist Jessica Moon from Alabama, USA, who created a viz on her favorite genre of television, fantasy. She's joined by Kim Vitiello to talk through her build. So over to you both. Thank you, Archana. All right. Delete the phone layout, y'all, if you're not going to use it. It would be pretty epic if someone made a real phone layout in IronViz, though. Yeah. Uh, I did change some of the defaults, like the font. I think I was originally going with Arial, and Kim thought that might not have enough personality for the fantasy theme. So we settled on Trebuchet after we cycled through some public safe fonts. Mm-hmm. I do have some custom hex codes. I used a website to figure out a good palette. I can't quite remember which and accessible-colors.com to check the contrast. This viz went from a lot of green to accidental magenta and finally to the desired shades of purple. Yeah, accessibility is so important. I'm really glad that you made sure to consider that. Um, and what we're actually seeing here too, we call that on stage. I think this was an iron viz first where you actually started in the dashboard. So what was your approach for that? I have a lot of containers and text elements going on that I didn't want to deal with at the end when I would undoubtedly be more stressed. I feel like if you watch this build, you will know the ways of the tiled container. The floating, the, the floating container is actually to catch all the pesky default legends. So when I bring in the controls container, I have to make sure something is in it so it doesn't become the legend catching container. Mm, it's a legendary tactic. Um, but I'm actually curious. I think people are going to hear that accidental magenta and wonder what happened with that. Do you want to explain what that was? Yes, um, I was working on my laptop, which I had dimmed to work late at night in bed without disrupting my husband's sleep. And I didn't realize how that would affect the colors being displayed. I thought I had found the most perfect shade of purple, only to realize in our next session, it was rather pink when I brought it up to my large monitor. Uh, this video is sped up. I wish I could create parameters and drag calcs over this fast. I was rather slow using the Poulter method for calcs because one false move and you've got this clipboard data source that's almost impossible to come back from. Here, as we're um, getting towards the end of this third set of calcs, I had to create a separate calculation for the shared actors. This count D calculation was really annoying because it wouldn't just drag over for some reason. I had to make a separate calculation here. Yeah, it's weird how that one didn't cooperate for some reason. And for our viewers that may not fully remember or understand what the Poulter method is, do you wanna go through that a little bit? Yes, the Poulter method. You comment out the title of each calculation and paste a series of calculations in a single calc window. You can then highlight each calc and drag it over to the data pane. Um, it's also worth noting that the order in which you bring calculations in is important. To, important. If you pull predecessor calcs in after subsequent calcs, you will have to deal with some dreaded exclamation calcs. Uh, it's definitely worth bringing them in in the proper order. I think experienced Tableau users will know this. And for newer users, we have to just call out the fact that order of operations with Tableau for everything is just so important across the board. Yes. And now I'm doing all the visual assignments, starting with the shapes. 
I did some prep work to have all the possible shape values listed. So I could use that for shape assignment before switching to the calcs that reference parameter values. I mentioned this to you when we first looked at this, but I think it's such a good idea to just do this on this one sheet in advance because later on, if you had the data in there, you'd be trying to mess with filters and configuring it differently. So this was just such a good way to save time and just kind of get everything done right away. Yes. And um, here I'm going through the color calcs to get all the colors assigned. Like the dashboard setup, I'm getting all administrative items done up front. All right. And now I'm getting the sheet set up so it can be duplicated for future sheets by making it fit entire view, uh, getting rid of borders, making sure the background is transparent. Uh, fit entire view was big. I was so relieved that translated to the sheets as they were brought in the dashboard. Mm -hmm. All right. And now that highlight field was an important an important detail to add um, because it used it's used in an anti highlight action. Uh, to be quicker, I have all the sheets in that single highlight action in both source and target. So that really needed to be on all the sheets and in all the layers. I feel like highlight actions are a really often overlooked feature that Tableau has. So do you want to touch on what an anti-highlight action is for anyone who's confused by that? Yes, the anti-highlight action uses Tableau's highlight capability, but instead of focusing on a single element, all the items have the field used in the action, so nothing grays out it kind of overrides Tableau's default activity so everything stays in focus. Nice. I put, oh yeah, I, I put a lot on detail here and tooltip, which is not best practice for performance, but with a lazy dev trick. So all future titles and tooltips would work without more field dragging. And oh. here, we have a pie chart. We do have a pie chart. And we think this might also be another iron viz first. Yes, and it was not terrible, y'all. It only has two colors and was a space-saving chart for the intent behind it. People yeah. like circles. Don't fight yeah. it. This was a good example of best practice for pie charts, for sure. Um, and I think it's worth calling out with this pie chart, too. You've got borders showing up here, and then there was specific borders on some of the shapes earlier, too. Um, we didn't have a chance to talk about that when we were on stage because so much was happening, but I really liked your thought behind that, and I'd love if you could go into it a bit. Borders in this dashboard signal a user input in the title ID parameter. It suggests that those series and episodes have been seen and are therefore more visible in the dashboard itself. I was so lucky to find a graphic designer on the Noun project that had a really good selection of both filled and outlined shapes. The Noun project is hands down my best subscription. Mm -hmm. I tended to use nice. previous sheets to build the next one. I'll add as many components as I can without adding the labels, reference lines, et cetera, that were sheet specific before I duplicate. That's what I did to get the bones of the title. That's a really smart trick too. And I, I, you can actually see those borders really coming into play here as well. And I like that it adds to the effect of it being sparkles, like, like it's magic dust or something. Thank you. Uh, this particular scatter plot, I just want it to be a single title, either the best rated user input or the first title in alphabetical order. So I use that top one by the calculation to achieve that. I'm also going through and making the filter edits needed because since I bring this in as a single sheet, that filter handily comes along for the ride. That's a good call. Sometimes people overlook that. So that was a really good catch. Thank you. Making the last little edits. Mm -hmm. And now we are getting it to the title magic. I pulled off the columns and rows and added the title coordinates by double clicking that field. I bring it in a second time so I can switch rows and columns. That gets rid of the map background and um, coordinates will uh, now work X comma Y. I did have to reverse the axis. I think this may have been 
the audiences and one of my favorite parts of your build, in addition to your shape story. Um, I am curious, how did you get the coordinates for this? Sure. Um, I used the web plot digitizer in PowerPoint. I wrote out fantasy in hero archer font and saved it as an image. I brought that image into the web plot digitizer to generate coordinates. I brought that coordinate file into Tableau Prep and joined it with the episode data on ID equals row number. Oh, I, I like that you call out that you use PowerPoint too, because I think sometimes people feel like they need to use a fancy wireframing tool or they need to use Photoshop or they need to use like Figma in order to make a really cool graphic or a really cool effect or um, grid like this in Tableau. And you really don't necessarily need that. You can use a tool like PowerPoint. PowerPoint will often do the job. And you'll see I had the text for the um, title fields already generated in my prep flow, which saved a lot of time. Nice. It's fairy time. I do Ooh. have the fairy shape in the same uh, shape folder, but I named it starting with ZZZ, so it wouldn't interfere with the other shape assignments. Kim, you had mentioned how the block of text was overwhelming. This fairy with a dynamic zone visibility action gives the user the ability to see that context, but not by default. I think that was a good call. Remember how Andy mentioned he didn't want to read a block of text when we were on stage? So that was a good way to hide it. Thank you. Now we're on to the last chart, and this was the one most in flux during development. And I finally landed on a single dot plot with the top 10 recommendations by either first three genre matching or shared top actors. Yeah, I really liked the recommendations piece of this build. Like when you first told me your story concept for this, I really liked it because A, it tied in your childhood memories. And then B, like I would use this myself because I'll often finish a show or I'll finish a movie or a book and I want something similar to it, but I don't know how to identify which pieces of those I really care about. And I almost have like a hangover almost where I'm like, I want more of this, but I don't know what it is about it that I like. So for me, this is actually something I think I would use. Well, when I think of TV, I don't think of hard hitting insights. I think of TV as what am I going to watch next? Mm -hmm. I do watch way too much TV. I've been known to binge it. I have an <laughs> app that tracks when new episodes land. I might have a problem. All right. This castle was the, castle. On the death of me. Trying yeah. to get it sized and positioned to where it wouldn't block tooltips. Boy, bay. Yeah, I know you were sad to see the castle's predecessor go, but I think it was a good replacement. Yes, I had that misty area chart of the count mm -hmm. of fantasy episodes over time that looked really cool, but it took over two minutes to create, and I needed that time to complete the other charts. Yeah. Uh, here's that anti-highlight action we talked about earlier. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right here. It is hard to get everything pared down to that 20 minute window. And that's why it can have so much pressure on you guys. But I think you, the final product was still fantastic. Right. Hide your sheets, hide your wife. We are done. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So as we're finishing up, I wanted to ask you before we go, what are your words of wisdom for future contestants? I would stress the importance of carving out some time uh, right after getting the data, because the sooner you solidify the build, the longer you have to practice, uh, potentially retaining more details and charts. Also, make sure to ping your sous visor for advice and feedback. They are like your Sherpa in this spectacular climb. <laughs> I love that. And it was fantastic working with you, Jessica. I, you know, I've said it on stage and I'll say it again. You are my Iron Viz champion, no matter what, um, with all peace and respect toward Chris and Pata. They did amazing jobs as well. But this was such a great experience. And I'm so happy to have worked with you and got to witness 
um, your creative zest on stage.